Okay, we move on to the next function, letter g, which is f of x equals the absolute value of x. What is the absolute value of x? Absolute value of x comes from the distance function. It's asking the magnitude or the distance from zero. So for instance, the number two is two spaces away from zero. So the absolute value of two would be two. Likewise, the absolute value of negative two, how far is negative two away from zero? It is also two spaces away from zero, so the absolute value of negative two would be positive two. So absolute values take a negative number and make them positive. They take a positive number and keep it positive. So really, an absolute value function is two separate functions. Here's how this works. This is called a piecewise defined function. You have two cases. You have f, if x is greater than or equal to zero, it keeps that exact same value. Absolute value of two is two, but if it's x is less than zero, if it's a negative number, it returns the opposite. So how do you return the opposite? How would I plug in a negative two and get a two? Well, that the opposite would be negative x. So this is the absolute value of x as two separate functions, a piecewise defined function. Anytime it's greater than or equal to zero, it returns the number. Anytime it's less than zero, a negative number, it returns the opposite of that number. In other words, a positive, okay? The reason that I'm bringing this up is we cannot put the absolute value of x into our calculator, but we can put x into our calculator and we can put negative x into our calculator. So if we wanna use our calculator and the table feature on our calculator to help us with the absolute value of x, we would actually need to analyze both of these functions individually. Let's just think of some numbers though. I don't care if you use the table feature or not. Let's think about zero. If I plug in zero, what's the absolute value of zero? It'd be zero. And then any positive number, it's exactly the same as y equals x, you get the number out. So for instance, the point one one's on there, two, two, three, three, four, four, and five, five. So that's the absolute value of x when we have positive numbers and zero. The question then becomes, what does it look like if we have negative numbers? Well, think about plugging in a negative one. Negative one is a negative number, so it, it sends out the opposite of that. In other words, the positive version of it. So if I plug in a negative one, I would actually get a positive one. If I plug in a, and let me write that down, negative one would give me a positive one. Negative two would give me a positive two. Negative three would give me a positive three. Negative four would give me a positive four. Negative five would give me a positive five. So that's what the left side of this function looks like. So absolute value of x, that's that v function. Again, we're going to ask our questions. What's that domain? Domain is how far left does this go, which is all the way to negative infinity. How far right does it go? All the way to positive infinity. So the domain of the graph would be negative infinity to infinity. Range, again, being the question how far down, how far up. We'll think about how far down it goes. It stops at y equals zero. How far up does it go? It goes all the way up to infinity. So my range of this graph would be bracket zero comma infinity. Let's talk about what's going on as I go from left to right. Well, as I go from left to right, at first I'm going down and then I'm going up after zero. Zero is the x value that breaks it. And again, remember, increasing and decreasing is the x values. So what are the x values when this graph is going down? Well, this graph is going down all the way from negative infinity to zero, the x values of negative infinity to zero. So it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero. We're gonna use parentheses on both of those. When is this graph going up? This graph is going up anytime x equals zero, all the way to the right to infinity, this graph is going up. So the intervals of increasing are zero to infinity, again, both with parentheses. X-intercepts, where does it cross that x-axis? At the point zero, zero. Y-intercepts, where does it cross the y-axis? At the point zero, zero. So that's the graph and analyzation of absolute value of x. Let's go and remember some more. How about f of x equals e to the x? This is one of our exponential functions. In college algebra, you should have graphed multiple exponential functions like two to the x, four to the x, one half to the x. The most important one being the natural exponential function, which is e to the x. What stinks about this is there's not any real nice numbers. So I want you to get comfortable with the number e. Yes, e is not a letter. I mean, it is a letter, but mathematically it is a number. So to get comfortable with e in your calculator, I want you to go to the home screen and I want you to hit, you'll see a button that says LN. 
So I want you to hit second LN. That gives you e to the x. And then I want you to put the power as a 1. So on my calculator, I'm looking at e to the 1 and go ahead and hit enter. If you see e is the value 2.718281828, and then it doesn't repeat. It actually changes from there on out. Um, there's no repetition in this number from there on out. It's never ending. That's called an irrational number. It can't be written as a fraction. So what do you need to know about E? Well, the only reason that I care that you know the value of E is because we have to plot this number somewhere um, on our, in, in our graph. We have to be accurate within the window. So when I plugged in a 1, I got E. The point is 1 E, but where do I plot that point? Well, x equals 1, E would be about 2.7. So I'm going to go in, I'm just going to estimate it, and then I'm going to label it as 1 E. E. So I go just a little bit less than 3, about 3 quarters the way between 2 and 3 in terms of height to find that point 1E. That's the only reason that I did that. So let's go back to our table feature. Let's clear anything out. We're going to put E to the X in there. Again, that second LN button gives us E. Then I hit that X button. I hit Enter. I want to start at negative 5, hit Enter, steps of 1, Auto, at, okay, and I'm going to see as I go from negative 5, it's definitely in our window, it's virtually 0 at negative 5. And the same thing for negative 4, negative 3, I'm virtually at a value of 0. Negative 2, still there, negative 1, just a little bit higher, okay. Now let's look at 0. 0 is when I first get a decent point, 0 I finally get 1. At 1, I get that 2.718, so that's 1e. And then if I keep on going, I have 2, and I'm already at the number 7 point something, which would be out of the window. So it looks like those are the only values that I have within the window. I'm going to go ahead and sketch this. If you notice, the graph never touches that y-axis. It approaches it, but never touches it. And again, if you remember from earlier with the reciprocal function, that means that y equals 0, the horizontal line, y equals 0, is a horizontal asymptote. I'll put an H and an A there for horizontal asymptote, okay? It does ask us to label three points in this graph. We've labeled 0, 1. We've labeled 1, E. We need to label another point. So I'm just going to label one here, negative 1. And if you think about it, E to the negative 1, isn't that the exact same thing as 1 over E to the 1, which is 1 over E? So that would be that value right there. The negative 1, 1 over E would be the value. Now I've labeled three points exactly. If you gave me decimal approximations on this on the test, I'd be perfectly fine with that as well. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to have you graph E to the X on the test, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay. So domain. Domain, again, how far left, how far right? Well, how far left would this graph go? All the way. How far right would it go? All the way. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity. Range, as always, range is how far down, how far up. So how far down does this graph go? It goes to zero, but I want to be clear about this. It actually doesn't touch y equals zero. How far up does it go all the way to infinity? So again, if I'm talking about the range here, it goes from zero to infinity, but at zero it doesn't touch it, so I actually need to use a parenthesis here. What's happening as I go from left to right? Well, as I go from left to right, I'm going up. The entire way I'm going up. A lot of people here say the intervals of increasing is zero to infinity. When people think the interval here is zero to infinity, they're looking at the y values. And I don't care about the y values for increasing and decreasing. I care about the x values. So where is it going up? Everywhere. It goes up from negative infinity to infinity. Negative infinity to infinity is where it's increasing. For which x values is this graph going down? The answer is none. When does it touch the x-axis? It doesn't, so none. And where does it touch the y-axis? That's at the point 0, 1. So there's your y-intercept for you. So there's our graph of e to the x. We've labeled it accurately or drawn it accurately within the window, labeled three points, and answered all the questions. Let's go to our last graph, which is the graph of f of x equals natural log of x. If you remember, natural log of x is the reciprocal function of e to the x. So, for instance, what's the reciprocal function of x plus 2 would be x minus 2. The reciprocal function of x, sorry, not reciprocal, I mean inverse function. The inverse function of x plus 2 would be x minus 2. It's the opposite, okay? Um, what's the 
inverse function of x squared. Well, the opposite of squaring something would be square root of x. What's the opposite of e to the x? The answer is the natural log of x. So the natural log of x is log base e of x. Okay, we can use natural log of x on our calculator. You already hit the natural log button. So go under your table, hit natural log, type in x, hit enter. Again, you're going to start at negative 5, a step of 1, auto, hit enter. And you're going to see a bunch of errors. In fact, you're going to see errors all the way through 0. The first point that I see on here would be the point, let me put this here. This would be the point one zero. And then if I go on, I see the point two and then it's point six something. So I'm just gonna sketch that right there. Three would be just above one. Four would be about 1.4-ish. Five would be 1.6-ish. So just something like that right there. So, so far I have my graph drawn going slightly up to the right direction. But the question is what the heck happens to the left? Well. From 0 on to the left, this function is undefined. Natural log of x has a restricted domain. I can't put in 0 and I can't put in any negative numbers. It is restricted to positive numbers only. You might want to plug in some fractions here to help you out. So you go back to that function where we put auto. You might want to change it to ask and do something like 1 half, 1 third, 1 eighth. What are you going to see? Well, when you start plugging in those numbers, you're going to start seeing values that approach negative infinity. As you get x is closer and closer to zero, your y value is going to get uh, grow unbounded towards negative infinity. Okay, so what do we have here? We actually have the other one had a horizontal asymptote. E to the x had a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So its inverse function has a vertical asymptote at y equals zero. You swap x's and y's with those, okay? Domain, domain's how far left, how far right? Well, how far left does this graph go? It goes to zero, but it doesn't include it. How far right does it go? It goes all the way to infinity. So if I was writing the domain out, it'd be zero comma infinity. What's my range of this? Remember, range is how far down, how far up. How far down does this graph go? All the way into negative infinity. How far up would this graph go? Well, if I continued to the right, it would go all the way up to positive infinity. So the range of this graph is negative infinity to infinity. Increasing, decreasing, x values. What x values is it going up? What x values is it going down? Well, for any x value it's defined, notice that I'm always going up. So the x values that it's going up is the entire domain, which is zero to infinity. It's not negative infinity to infinity because it doesn't even exist for negative numbers and for zero. When is this graph going down? Nowhere. Okay. What are my x-intercepts? Does it ever touch the x-axis? Yes, it does at the point one zero. What are my y-intercepts? Does it ever touch the y-axis? The answer is none. If you notice, look at the domain range, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, increasing and decreasing between um, uh, e to the x and the natural log of x. And you will notice several of those answers are swapped. In particular, the x and y-intercepts essentially swapped. The domain and range essentially swapped. Increasing and decreasing, you got to be a little careful with. Okay, The vertical and horizontal asymptotes swapped. And the x points, x values and y values swapped. If you look at this, I didn't plot three points on that. Again, that's okay though. You could have plotted it with decimal values, labeled them with decimal values. Um, but there's the graph right there for you.